Our friend the Shaykh Ahmed al tawil after hearing this, he said, I grabbed him. And I did not know what to say to him. And this brother of mine, Ahmed the repenter, he said to me, Ya Akhi, I don't know what to do. I have lost my iman. And I cannot eat or drink or sleep. What am I going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? I said to him, the Shaykh says, I said to him, Ya Akhi, all I could remember right now, to have the ayah in the Qur'an, which gives the greatest hope of what I have memorized. I will recite it to you and remind you of it. Maybe that will give you some hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha'Allah. He said, all I could say to him was this, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَقُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Say, O Muhammad, to my servants, those who have blamed themselves and found sorrow and despair and agony, regretting their sin, do not despair from the mercy and forgiveness of Allah. Allah forgives all sins. And you know what the Ahmad the Repenter replied? He said to me, Ya Akhi, Allah will forgive for everyone else except for me. How could Allah forgive me? Yes, the ayah is true. But Allah, I cannot imagine Him forgiving me, but He will forgive for everyone else except for me. I've committed too much of a bad sin. He did not say this because He had lost hope in Allah, but because of the agony of the sin which He had, which would have entered His heart. I did not know what to say to Him, He said. And then I gave Him my phone number and said to Him, because the announcement came out for the, the, the departure of my airplane. I gave him my phone number and I said to him, maybe insha'Allah we can meet again back in the city of Riyadh, if Allah wills. So I let him go and I climbed on and went back to my homeland, thinking to myself, surely this person will forget all that which he is in. Surely after two or three days or four days or five days, he will forget the state that he is in and then insha'Allah he will go on in his normal life like the rest of any other person. He said, but when I arrived back to my homeland, after two whole weeks, I received a phone call from my friend. And my friend said to me, I need to quickly meet you at the, at the, at the local mosque. Immediately come over, brother. So I went to the local mosque, and then I met him. And as soon as he saw me, he burst into cries. And he hugged me, and he was shivering. And he said to me, my dear brother, I have not come to you to visit you again, but I have come to you to farewell you. I have come to you to farewell you, and maybe I will meet you in Jannah, insha'Allah, if Allah's mercy reaches me. I said to him, my brother, where are you going? And so I said to, and he said to me, maybe insha'Allah I will meet you in Jannah, and insha'Allah if Allah's mercy meets us, I will meet you there after death. So I grabbed him, and grabbed hold of him, and I was shocked about what he was saying. I said to him, where are you going? You must, you must tell me the truth. And then he replied to me, Maybe insha'Allah I'll meet you in Jannah and I am going to give myself in to the government. I am going to give myself in in the government. And as we know, in Saudi Arabia, brothers and sisters, the capital punishment is applied. The punishment of one who commits adultery when they are married, then they, there is the stoning to death in, an, in the court of law. If they give themselves in or if the witnesses come forth. I grabbed hold of him in fear and I screamed to him and I said to him, Ya Akhi, Usmur ala nafsik. Guard yourself. Have you gone crazy? Have you lost your mind? Do you not know that the punishment for an adulterer is stoning until death? Guard yourself. Guard your wife. Guard your children. Save yourself. There must be another way. And then Ahmed replied to him by saying, All of my family, my wife and my children cannot save me from hellfire. And all I want is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save me from hellfire on the day of judgment. I grabbed hold of him tighter, and I said to him, Look, ya akhi, all I can say to you is this, at least give me one more thing, for a friend. He said to me, ask for anything you like, except from asking me to not give myself in. I said to him, let us go to the most honorable and most knowledgeable shaykh that you and I know in this country, that you and I will both agree upon, and then we'll ask him for the fatwa. And if he says, let himself give in, then I will take you with my own hands and give you to, into the government. He agreed. He said, then shake our hands to this. 
He shook his hand, and then they went the next day to the most knowledgeable shaykh which they knew. And then the shaykh replied with a verdict of knowledge and evidence, and he said to him, "Do not let himself, do not let him give himself into the government. Allah can forgive him in another way." This shaykh who gave this verdict, he says, "This man Ahmed, he kept on calling me over and over again." He would call me in the night, and he would call me in the day, and then he would call me the next day, and he would say to me, "Ya Shaykh, ittaqillah fi Allah, O Shaykh, wa ana ata'alku bi raqabatik yom al qiyama. I will be held on your neck on the day of judgment, and I will say, Ya Rabb, I wanted to give myself into the government, and this Shaykh, he is the one who prevented me. So blame him today." And he would say this to the shaykh, and the shaykh would say, "I have not given you this verdict out of ignorance, but I have only given you this verdict out of pure knowledge and evidence." Until finally he agreed, and he went back. However, he did not stop there, brothers and sisters. The agony and the pain remained with him. The sorrow of the sin remained with him. The cry on his face remained with him. He never smiled after that for a very long time, as his wife says. And then. After that, he went back and he said to his friend, "I need to meet you once more." And then I met him and I asked him, "Why were you going this time?" And then he said to me, "I have come to farewell you once more." I asked him, "Why were you going this time?" Although the sheikh has given already the verdict, I said to he said to me, "I have come to farewell you, and Insha Allah I will meet back with you after I have gone to Hajj. I want to go to Hajj. I feel like I want to go and meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uriyad al Hajj." I want Hajj, and this is the sign of Iman, O oh, brothers and sisters. And so the Hajj was almost there. And I said to him, "Well, maybe inshallah you can go with our group." But then he replied to me by saying, "No, no, no." So I thought, Subhanallah, maybe Allah had changed his heart. Maybe he has some other group which he wants to go with. And then we went to Hajj. And on the third day, when we were stoning, you know, the stoning on the third day against Iblis. This is the day on the third day which you uh, carry out in Hajj, and that is the day when most of the people. Are gathered. Even some people become、um, stamped over there. So we said on that third day, while we were stoning, I looked around, and all of a sudden, from a distance, I saw Ahmed. I saw Ahmed, and then I screamed out to him, yelling to him, "Ya Ahmed, Ya Ahmed!" And then Ahmed looked at me. He saw me, but then, to my astonishment, he turned away and ran. He ran away from me. I said, "Subhanallah, what has changed his heart towards me?" And so, when we returned back to Riyadh. He said, "I contacted him and I met him, and then I asked him, 'Brother, when I saw you in Hajj and called out to you and you saw me, why did you run away from me? Have I done something to you? Have you changed your heart towards me?'" And then he said to me, "Listen to what he said, brothers and sisters. He said to me, 'I am not sad with you, nor am I upset. However, I was too busy on that day asking Allah to forgive me. I was too busy asking Allah to forgive me, and then I would look around.'" And I would say, How could Allah accept my Hajj? How could Allah accept these people's Hajj when I, the filthy person, am amongst them? When I, the filthy person, am amongst them, I am afraid that Allah may deny all these people their Hajj because I am there. So I began crying and crying. And then sometimes I would call and say to myself, Maybe Allah will forgive me because of these wonderful, pure people who are around me. Subhanallah. Subhana muqallib al qulubi, brothers and sisters. Subhanallah, who changes the hearts all of a sudden from the lowest state to the most degraded state to the highest state, even until they reach the state of the angels and the prophets and the messengers of Allah. This is the way he thought about.、It. And then after that, Ahmad the Repenter memorized the whole Quran off by heart, and then he began to fast one day on and one day off forever. And then he would pray his five prayers at the mosque in congregation. He would never leave them. And then he would pray the night prayers until he never left them. And he would recite the Quran every day until he would complete it every month. He would donate from his char- charitable from his money, and he would look after the, the orphan until he even donated, as I heard, to an orphanage and opened up an orphanage back in over there in Riyadh. He did all the noble and wonderful acts. Until one time, I recall one of the sheikhs who I met. He said, "I met Ahmed the Repenter one time, and he was praying. And then he came and sat with me, and he began to cry so much." This is another sheikh who met him. 
And he began to explain to me how sorry and sad he feels. And he began to cry. And so I said to him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving. And asked him, have hope in him. And then he got up and prayed in front of the shaykh. The shaykh says, I have never seen anyone pray like him. Two whole rukas, which took half an hour to complete. He was crying and weeping all the way through. I thought to myself, if he were to die praying this rukah, he will surely enter Jannah, guaranteed. So this Ahmad the repenter, he spent his days like this. And everyone were to call him Al-Abid, the one who, who, who prays to Allah. Until one day, Shaykh Ahmad, because he would stay with him all the time,